today is a very big day because we are finally going to show you how to put shiplap up in your house. If you follow me on Instagram, then you saw about a month ago, we put up a shiplap wall in our playroom. So once we completed that wall and we saw how easy it was, we decided that we were gonna shiplap our entire living room. Okay, I'm going to put a disclaimer out there that we are not professionals in any way. If you were looking for that, this is not the video for you. We researched shiplap DIY for months on blogs, YouTube videos, and we found a way that works for us. This is very simple affordable and really easy to do with not a lot of tools. So if you think that is you, keep on watching. So the first step in shiplap is you need to paint your walls white. I researched this a lot and people said different things. The easiest way I can explain it is if you are going to put shiplap up and you want it to look like real shiplap with gaps in between your wood, you need to paint it white. That's gonna be really hard to get a brush in between those gaps. So just do it really quick right before. Go to Walmart and buy the cheapest white paint that you can and put on one layer. All right, after you have painted the walls, the next thing that you need to do are mark the studs in the wall. So those are the two by fours that are beneath the drywall and you need to mark them so that your shiplap has something to hold on to. If you only put the shiplap into the drywall, then it's not gonna be secured. Okay, so we bought this tool at Lowe's, it was $20, and it will beep and tell you where the two by fours are in the wall. And you can mark them um, on the wall. So he's already marked the two by fours, and they go all the way down, so if you marked it up here, um, it'll go all the way down to the floor. All right, once you've marked the studs on the wall, you can put the shiplap up. So we bought our shiplap from Home Depot. It was cheaper than Lowe's, and all it is is plywood. So we bought the 1 4th inch thick plywood, already sanded. You can buy the plywood that's not sanded. It's cheaper, but you're gonna have to do a lot of sanding at home. So um, if you buy the shiplap, already sanded here you can ask them at Home Depot to cut your boards for you so shiplap sorry so plywood comes in eight foot boards or four foot boards right Trey uh -huh. yeah and depending on your room you can get either if the walls are eight foot or less you could go for the four foot boards if it's bigger than eight foot, then get the eight foot boards. So we ask them to cut the boards into six inch strips and they will do it for free. And then we took it home and we took a piece of sanding paper and sanded all of the edges. So when we did this last time, the guy who cut it didn't do as good of a job and Trey had to sand every single edge. This time the guy who did it did a good job so he didn't have to sand as much but um, these are six inch strips for the shiplap. You can do eight inches, um, whatever you prefer for your room. We did six inch in the other room, so we're just gonna do the same throughout the whole entire house. Okay, so the next step is to figure out a pattern for your shiplap. Now last time we did it, we just kind of did it as we went, but you need a pattern because you're going to have creases or cracks in your boards where they meet um, like this and if you did the same pattern you would have the same crack all the way down and it's not gonna look as authentic this room I think it was like 11 foot or so so we came up with a pattern um, we had a crease here a crease here and then we did two and then a crease and then we did two and then a crease and then we did two boards and then 
so on and so on all the way down the next step before putting up the plywood is taking off your baseboards so we're not taking off the baseboards in this room because they are pretty thick and the plywood's going to match up with it nicely and we have crown molding we're going to keep it up there but if you have a room that has old baseboards or little baseboards you might want to take them off all um they're just nailed into the wall so if you take a pry bar is that what it's called crowbar, crowbar. if you take a crowbar oh, you can pry the baseboard away from the drywall and um take it off and just do your shiplap all the way down to the floor but you're gonna have to cut the carpet if you're doing that okay so in this room we cut the carpet and peeled away the baseboard and the plywood went all the way to almost the floor so that whenever we do get new floor in here the floor will match up and then this will be sealed with the quarter round so you do need to be careful when pulling up the baseboard because you don't want to rip it if you see right there it kind of broke this piece um, you got to be very careful if you're just doing one wall if you're doing the whole entire room you can just take all of the baseboards up and it's not a problem okay so we're about to put up the shiplap but you need to level to make um, sure it's you need to make sure that it's level this was only ten dollars um is it level yeah it's about level um so it's not level over here that's probably why we have a big crack right there this one is not level, so what do we need to do? So we're going to start on the other side. So we're going to start on the other side. And we will just keep going and keep it level from that side so we don't have to start here. Okay. with the first row and all we used were hammers and finishing nails so these are one and a half inch finishing nails and we nailed them in what like every six inches every stud. to hit every stud and at the top and at the bottom and we haven't done this side yet because Trey's gonna do that last. But basically, you need to take the length of the room and measure the length of your plywood and try to determine the size of your pieces based on the length of your room. So this is a full eight foot board. Trey cut this one so that it would line up perfectly here because we have a little spot and so once that's covered he can just alternate and flip-flop these two boards all the way down Trey wanted me to add that you might need marriage counseling after this because <laughs> it's kind of stressful at first because you have to figure out the size of the boards yeah and we don't know what we're doing so um, this took us like 30 minutes, but it was a lot of measuring and math work and It takes a bit but after you figure out the length of the boards you can cut Them ahead of time and just start nailing and it goes a lot faster 
Okay, so we have now come to a point in the wall when you have to cut out of your wood. So we did this <laughs> the hard way before when we didn't have the tools. So we're gonna show you that way. And we bought a jigsaw, so that will make it easier. Okay, so before you put this piece on, you need to make sure that your outlet covers are on um, and measure your board according to your outlet cover. So if you don't like your outlet covers, you need to go to the store and get the ones that you want because once you put the board around it, they're gonna be pretty snug and it's gonna be hard. To, not impossible, but it's gonna be a little hard to get them off. Okay, so when you get to your outlets or your light switches, you're gonna have to do some measuring and really just some marking. So what I do, don't know if it's the easiest way, I take the depth at which I'll need to cut the board. So measuring the bottom of the switch I'd mark here and then I took a square and just marked it all the way through. And then to get the width, I just brought it down here, got these two marks here. And then again, I got a square and then just drew it through. So now when I go to cut, I'll just, I know I can just cut this little notch out. <laughs> okay, Trey's gonna be cutting right here yeah. with a jigsaw. Now, last time we did it, we used a... Box cutter? A box cutter. <laughs> 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 and a handsaw. And a handsaw because we didn't have the correct tool and Trey literally would cut and <laughs> saw it out. And it worked perfectly, but we bought a jigsaw for this. He also bought this handy dandy triangle thing to help him draw straight lines and to make sure that his lines are leveled. So this might come in handy. Or you can just square. use a... It's the triangle that's called a square. Okay, well you can really just use a pencil and guess like we did last time. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's day two and we decided to take off the baseboards. So if you are doing this and taking off your baseboards, if you get a pry bar like this, pry the baseboard away and it should pop off. It's been almost a week of putting up shiplap. We have been working and busy and things, so it's taken a while. But, um, I'm gonna show you the next step. The next step is to put quarter round in the corners. This is optional, you don't have to. If you're not doing it, then you need to make sure when you're putting up the shiplap that there's not a gap. Um, but we like to put it in the corner. So this isn't quarter round that sticks out. This is quarter round that has like a dip in it. And we did that because we have trim at the top and we don't want the quarter round sticking out further than the trim. So you can buy this at Home Depot. This was 77 cents a foot. And just measure the height of your room, multiply it times four. Um, Trey already measured it and cut it the right length with the saw. So now he's just gonna put it in the corner and nail it. If you had a nail gun, this would be the perfect time to use it. All right, so in our other room, this is what our quarter round looked like. We bought the quarter round here that kind of has like a shiny, like plasticky white coat on it. And he nailed it in. We still haven't painted the nails, but this is quarter round that sticks out. Um, so that's the difference. This is white and our paint here is not white. And I didn't really like that, so. That is why in the other room, we're going with a pine quarter round so that I can just paint it all the same color as the wall. 
Okay, so now that the shiplap is pretty much all put on the wall except for one corner, I'm gonna start painting the shiplap and this is the best part because it starts to really look like shiplap. So all that you need to paint is some sort of tray to put your paint in, a roller brush, and this roller brush is six inches, the perfect length because my boards are six inches. And this is actually a microfiber cloth. You can buy regular, but I thought that this one did a really nice job last time in putting the paint on the boards. So you can tell the microfiber one is very soft and fluffy. Now the reason why I like this is because if I'm rolling across the boards this way, my roller is not gonna get stuck in between the crack in between the boards. If you're going up and down, or if you have a really big roller, your roller is gonna get pinched in between those cracks and paint is gonna squeeze in between the cracks. Now, I guess that wouldn't look that bad if you were doing it like this everywhere, but you're gonna have to go get a small brush and brush in between the boards to make sure that gunks of paint don't get left everywhere. So if you buy the six inch one, this will also work if you have eight inch boards, it's gonna do a lot better than a big one. So all I'm gonna do is take my primer and I'm gonna prime the board. Wood is very absorbent and it is going to take you layers and layers and layers of paint if you don't prime it first. So we went to Lowe's and asked somebody what primer to use. They were totally trying to get us to buy the most expensive primer in there and you don't need it. So we bought Kilts 2 Latex Primer. What was this tray, like 16 bucks? It was cheap, it was less than 20 for sure for a whole gallon. You put one layer all over your boards, just a thin layer let it dry, and then you can apply paint. The next step after you've put on the shiplap is to take caulking and fix any nails that may have gotten a little messed up. So some people when they do shiplap, they take caulking and they put it in to every single crack. Um, it's all about preference. So you can fill every crack with caulking. It's gonna take you a lot of time. I like the way it looks rustic. Also, I don't like to cover the nails with caulking. I like the way that it looks too. It looks more rustic. And um, if you used little finishing nails, you can hardly even see them, especially when there's paint over them. But if you have a nail that got messed up, you can take caulking and cover it. All right, so this nail kind of got put in a little crooked, but it's okay. You can just take your caulking. This one is solid tray. Take your caulking. I like to use my fingers. Trey probably doesn't <laughs> like that. I don't care. Um, and push it down flat and then let it dry. So sometimes the brush is a little hard to get on the edges with, so I'll just take a cheapy Dollar General brush and I just paint by the trim, but make sure to get that extra paint out of the middle. So if you zoom in, you can see that there's paint in the cracks. If you take a bobby pin and bend it, Take the skinny edge with no ridges and you can s <laughs> scoot it in there and it gets rid of it. I am done. It took me almost four hours off and on to paint all of the primer in the room and it is looking amazing. Still, the room is not finished over here, but it's looking so good. So as you can tell, the primer starts to fade. It's not as white 
um, when it dries as when you apply it. So I actually started using a paintbrush to finish it because my hands were hurting from holding the roller. So actually using a brush was a lot faster. I just used the same brush that I showed you earlier. So the final step is to paint. Now you could choose any color paint that you want. I went with Alabaster by Sherman Williams. I bought it at Lowe's. You can buy it at the Sherman Williams store too. But I got it in a gallon. This is their Valspar 2000 and I think it was like their basic kind, but I got it in a, a satin finish. So it is very easy to clean. So wood itself is very rough and it's not gonna be the easiest to wipe down. If you get a stain baking, you don't wanna go with a paint that is matte and not easy to clean. The worst thing you can do is put all of this up and then you have to repaint every couple of months because of stains. So I got a satin finish. You could also get semi-gloss if you'd like. With Alabaster White, if you look it up on Pinterest, you will see that this is probably the nation's favorite white color. I didn't even get a paint swatch and try it at home. I just trusted that people were right and it is. <laughs> so Alabaster White is a very good color if you're looking for white. My wall color is not the same color as my baseboards. Um, you might want to tape right now if you're not a good painter. We have literally painted every room in this house, so I feel like I know what I'm doing now. I'm not going to tape. Um, also, I'm just gonna give our trim a good coat of pure white after this because um, we haven't painted this trim in this room since we moved in, so it needs it. Okay, so coat one of the paint is done. Took about three hours. Now we're filling in any big hole from the wood with spackling. Some of the wood has holes in it. Okay, so once the spackling dries, we will do coat two, and hopefully we will be done. Okay guys, we are finally finished with the shiplap. It took probably a week and a half to do my hands currently hurting from painting. We still might do another coat on the shiplap. I don't know, I need to think about it for about a week, but um, it looks beautiful. I can't believe that it's finished. My husband did an amazing job. So it definitely made the room look so much bigger. The next plan is to get like barn door window coverings there. So I really hope that y'all enjoyed this video. If you are sitting at home wishing that you had a shiplap wall or a shiplap room, I hope that this video gives you some hope and faith in yourself that you can do it too because believe me, I really didn't think we'd ever be able to do something like this and it just took educating ourselves figuring out what to do, and if you're a handy person already or a DIY person already, it makes it that much easier. But if you're not, just educate yourself, and I hope that this video really helps you because believe me, we are not professionals at all. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe because this is not the last video like this. We have many plans to do DIY projects to our house. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you again next time.